Be Wealthy and Smart, Episode 16. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how you can be a luxury brand. And what you're going to learn are the 10 features of a luxury brand, and why it's not just about charging a high price, why quality is so important, and what it means for you to be a luxury brand and why that's really important for you to know. So it's my belief that you're on this earth for a divine purpose, that you've been given personal currency, that's special gifts and talents for you to share with the world. And some people know what their passion, their purpose is, and some people are still exploring that. And if you're one of the people who isn't sure what that is yet, maybe this will help you a little bit today. But I believe that connecting in with that passion and purpose and creating your business around that is going to create wealth for you. That is the second pillar of wealth building to create your luxury brand business. And I really believe it's so important that you connect in with that personal currency that you have because that's what you love doing. That's what's going to make it fun for you. That's who you are and what you're about are your interests and that's what makes you you. So we're going to tap into that and use that to build wealth for you because again, 77% of the wealthy created their wealth by having a business. So that's going to be one of your pillars of wealth building. So when you look at your business, I want you to think of it as a pursuit of excellence in every sense of that word. And that's what I mean when I talk about luxury. It's really about quality and excellence and being the best at what you do and striving for, not for perfection, but just to be at the top of your game. I think if you're going to do something, you may as well do it really well. And there's nothing wrong with offering a quality product at a premium price. You want to be seen as innovative, unique, original, creative, top quality, and more. And yes, of course, it's necessary to make a profit to stay in business and be able to reinvest in your business, which a lot of people sort of miss that, that, you know, some people feel like, well, they've got a price only to just make enough money and not really make a lot more. There's some, there's some people that have that mentality, but they forget you've got to pay taxes. You've got to reinvest in your business in order for your business to grow. So you need to have profits in order to just continue along. But it's also a wealth building tool for you that can be tremendous. And once your mindset is okay with that, if you're fighting that and resisting it, That's something that you want to look at because you know that I feel that mindset is so important in building wealth. And if you have these thoughts that are blocking you about, oh, I can't have a business or, oh, I'm too busy to have a business or I don't know what my passion and purpose, my personal currency is, I, you know, I just don't know how I'm going to do that. Nobody will buy what I have to offer. All those thoughts are limiting beliefs that we've all thought at one point or another, but we've just put them aside and kept going anyway. And if wealth is something that you want, then you're going to have to overcome those limiting beliefs. You're going to have to put that negativity beside, behind you and move forward and not get caught up in just stopping at those limiting beliefs. So I want you to really think about what limiting beliefs might you have that is stopping you right now, because this is an important part of your wealth building process. If you miss out on the thing that 77% of the wealthy are doing to gain wealth, well, you're making it much harder on yourself than you need to be. And I'm going to be here with you every step of the way to get you to where you need to go. So don't worry about having all the answers right now. We're going to figure that out. So I want you to just relax. I want you to open your mind. I want you to get rid of limiting beliefs. And I want you to say, 
I'm going to have that second pillar of wealth building working for me because that's where 77% of the wealthy made their wealth. I can't leave that out of my equation. That's too important for your wealth building. So here's how you can be a luxury brand. You know, everybody has a luxury brand in them. And I say that even a hamburger could be a luxury brand. If you've, of course, been to McDonald's, you'll see that McDonald's sells hamburgers for about 99 cents. And yet, if you go to a nice steakhouse, you also can buy a hamburger and it's about $12. What's the difference? Well, there's a lot of differences, but it's not that they're simply the same hamburger and one is charging more. There's way more to it than that. And I want you to sort of really help me pick this apart and show you the different components that go into this that make that $12 hamburger $12. So it's probably, you know, hamburger that's grass fed beef. It's probably a thicker patty than the thin paper thin, you know, McDonald's patty. Um, McDonald's is putting their pink sludge in their hamburgers. Now, this is not going to have pink sludge in the $12 hamburger. It's probably also served on a nice piece of china with a nice white tablecloth. They may have a side salad included. You've got this lovely restaurant that you're sitting in at this gorgeous, you know, bar or at a beautiful table and a glamorous setting. They might have live entertainment. Uh, You simply can't just take that 99 cent hamburger and put a $12 price tag on it and sell it at the steakhouse, right? You have to have the higher end perception and detail and amenities that go with it. So you need to include those components of a luxury brand in order to command the higher prices and to convey the quality. So just like in my hamburger example, I'm showing you that a hamburger can even be a luxury brand. You can turn any product or service into a luxury brand. I mean, it's been done with paper towels, it's been done with peanut butter, it's been done with just about anything where they're even water, they're making some water high end, even Trump is trying to make a high end water. It's a commodity, it's still H2O, it's water. So uh, anything can be converted into a luxury brand, but you have to have the right components. So what are those components? Well, there are 10 and they must cohesively all work together. So the first thing is luxury brands are exclusive. That is, the buyers want people to know that they're affluent or that they have worked hard enough to be able to have this exclusive brand. And they long to differentiate themselves and confirm their social status. It makes them feel unique, accomplished, and even rewarded for their success. So think of an exclusive country club in your area. Okay, picture that. Got that? And then picture a public golf course in your area. All right, what's the difference between the two? Well, one of the big differences is the private country club is exclusive. Not only is it priced more, but it has nicer features but it has exclusivity. So the people that belong there are feeling like they've come into their own in some way, that they've made it in some way, that they're, that they've strived for success. And this is a reflection of their success. Otherwise they would just join the public golf course. So that exclusivity that luxury brands have is really crucial. Number two, Customers love the physical and functional attributes the product delivers. So people get a connection to a brand or brand story. Think about Nike and the connection that people have to just do it. And all the people that are athletes, that are inspired by their athletic commercials, uh, that is a real connection to the brand or the brand story. Other brands like perfumes, sports equipment, cosmetics, they use this tactic really well by featuring celebrities in their advertising. And think of, you know, an iPhone, the functionality of the iPhone or the Apple products. 
I mentioned on uh, another episode that I wasn't real great with a PC, but I look pretty good with an Apple because I can really maneuver it a lot easier and I understand it and it's very intuitive and I relate to it. I'm connected to an Apple so much that I'll never buy another PC again. So there, you know, things that are the functional part of whatever the product is, people get very tied to that. You know, you want something that's easy to use and really can have great functionality. Okay. Number three, luxury products and services portray quality and design and our workmanship. So there's a very high-end watch called a Patek Philippe watch, which is all handmade. It's a, basically a work of art, very, very expensive. And it still functions as a watch, but they make it very limited in quality. I'm sorry, in quantity. And it's associated with sports professionals like polo matches and things like that that are exclusive. So it's meant to express an owner's individuality, that there's not that many of them. It displays quality, wealth, and position. And it's the luxury angle that people in that category want. They want to show that they've made it. And to show they've made it, they can wear a very expensive watch that's a work of art. So it portrays quality and design and workmanship. Number four, the brand performs at an experiential level. So for this, think of Ralph Lauren. If you've ever been to New York City and you've been to the flagship store, it's an amazing, amazing store because it feels like you're walking into an old English mansion in America that is beautiful and not stuffy, but just gorgeous and well-appointed and luxurious. And they created this whole lifestyle around the clothing brand so that you experience this preppy polo status lifestyle. And so that's an experiential level. It's, it's creating a whole experience around the brand. Step five, luxury products and services have pedigree. So that means that they have a long history of quality and status. So think of something like Tiffany's store. You know, there's still Audrey Hepburn, Breakfast at Tiffany's, um, little posters out and movie, the movie, which I loved. One of my favorite movies was Breakfast at Tiffany's. I just love that movie. And I love Audrey Hepburn. I am a nut about Audrey Hepburn and I collect some of her books and posters and I just think she's an amazing, she was an amazingly incredible woman and incredibly beautiful outside and inside. So, but to have a pedigree, you you need to bring in your reputation and your story. So that is, uh, as an entrepreneur, something you can bring in as your personal story, your experience, your work history in a luxury brand way. Tell your background and how you came to start your business, what experience or training you have and why you're the best at what you do. That's how you bring in your pedigree. You don't have to be an 80 year old product, um, but a lot of the top brands are very old products right now. But you can do that just by bringing in your experience. So you don't have to do anything other than just tell your personal story and how you overcame uh, a lot of challenges. Step six, luxury products and services imply a natural scarcity. So a lot of luxury products are handcrafted, they're expensive, they're limited in number, they're not available to everyone. You know, when you go to Starbucks, they make you a handmade latte. It's not just coffee that's been on the burner all day and they pour you a cup of coffee. No, it's like this handmade work of art that's customized just for you. It's like artists that paint paintings and create limited editions that are numbered and signed. And as entrepreneurs, you can limit the number of clients you work with or limit the number of one-on-one -on -one clients or limit the number of people that come into your membership group. There's all different ways that you can put limitations on your products and services. Number seven, luxury has an emotional connection to the customer and distances itself from mass market brands. So this means that you go beyond the cognitive brain and into the subconscious because you're going to appeal to people in a way that's very subconscious. 
but it's something that you have to understand. What's the emotional connection to the customer? So let's say that you were a car salesperson and you were you worked at the Bentley store and people were coming in to buy Bentleys and you were telling them all the you know beautiful workmanship and this and that and all the different features they have and blah, blah, blah. But you didn't really understand the emotional connection. What's the emotional connection? The emotional connection is that most people who buy high-end cars are buying it as a reward for their success. They're buying it because maybe they had their best year ever or they just sold their business or they got a big contract or something like that. But it's as a reward for their success. So you wouldn't need to be selling all these features about the Bentley. It's just, you know, the person's going to come in, pick out their colors and boom. They just want to have a little medal that they're putting on that is a reward for their success. So that's an example of understanding the emotional reasons why people buy your products and services. Number eight, luxury products and services live in an environment of detail. So whether you have a store or whether you have a website, the customer experience is detailed and unique with a high level of personal service. You know, when you go to buy a high-end pair of shoes, you not only get the shoes, but you also get a little white cloth bag to put the shoes in with the drawstring at the top. And then you get the matching box that's beautiful. And then the box goes in the matching shopping bag that's beautiful. So all of these different details, it's an environment of detail. And the very store that you buy a luxury good in is full of detail. So they often have, you know, are paying attention to the nth degree of detail and anticipating what you want in advance as well. So number nine, the buyer associates the product or service with public relations, media celebrities, and leaders. Well, this has been true, although I will say that in this internet age, there's new research that's showing that celebrities are less effective as the spokespersons for spokespeople for um, products and services. So as an entrepreneur, you don't have to hire a celebrity to be positioned as a luxury brand, but you do have to be concerned with where you advertise or whom you partner with what your videos look like, whether they're professionally done or whether they're homemade, it makes a huge difference. Um, you know, media appearances that you're doing, where are you showing up in the media? Um, and you can accomplish some of this on a very with a very simple uh, customer review part of your website. For example, recently I went to buy a new headboard for my bedroom and I read all of the customer reviews about the headboard. I I read about was the color like the picture in the catalog or picture online, you know, how difficult was it to put together, all of that stuff. And reading all of those customer reviews was extremely helpful. And for me, that was kind of that third party that I needed to endorse buying this expensive headboard because somebody was telling me their opinion about it. So it doesn't have to be a media celebrity or uh, somebody like that anymore. It can just be third parties that have bought the product, like real customers who are now uh, writing reviews and are becoming even more persuasive and and really just an important part of the buying process to, to read those reviews and read what people think and to see that they're satisfied. That's huge, and that's going to be even more important in the future. And finally, number 10, the the perceived value is high and pricing is high enough, but not outrageously so. So that means that the price is higher. You're not trying to be the lowest price, but an interesting happens, an interesting thing happens when you price higher, and that is that demand can actually increase when the price increases and that's been proven that yes you can actually sell more when the price goes up 
because it becomes more desirable. It becomes something that more people want now because it has that appearance of exclusivity. And people also do associate price with quality. You know, so many entrepreneurs think that if they lower their price, they can work with millions more people. Well, in theory, that's the way it works, but the reality is, is it takes a long time to reach millions of people. It's much better to price higher and work with fewer people so that you're perceived as more exclusive and you don't need so many customers. So in my opinion, it's better to have fewer customers, but to work at a higher level. So, you know, we do associate price with quality and that's just how we think. You know, for example, I was looking for an imitation Christmas tree. I decided I'm going to go with the imitation tree. You know, I'm by myself. I don't have someone to carry in a heavy tree for me anymore. So I decided I would buy an imitation tree and that would allow me to have a tree each year. And I really shopped for this because I didn't want a cheap one. I didn't want one that looked fake. I wanted a tree that really looked real. And I wanted to pay more to get a better tree and really have the quality, you know? So, I mean, I was looking and, and just looking at price, you know, I, I kept being concerned. Well, the price is low, but I don't know. I don't want it to look cheap. I don't want it to be a cheap tree. So I actually, it was crazy, but I was actually, you know, thinking about paying more to get a better tree. And that's just sort of how we think. So, you know, don't be shy to charge a healthy price for your product or service. It means that you can give better customer service. You can make a better product. You can add extras in there that other people can't. You can do so many more wonderful things when you're charging a higher price. So don't be shy for that. Make sure that you have a quality product, though, and that people are getting their money's worth, and then you're exceeding their expectations. That's what you want to do is really give them what they want and then beyond so that then you really have a luxury brand. So all 10 of these items have to be considered when developing your luxury brand. And maybe not all of them apply to you, but maybe some of them do. And you should, you know, consider all of these. And let me just go through the 10 again in case you didn't um, catch all of them the first time. So the first component of a luxury brand is luxury brands are exclusive. They are exclusive and they appeal to the affluent. They appeal to people because not everyone has them. Number two, customers love the physical functional attributes the product delivers. So they have a real connection to the brand or the brand store. They love the functionality of the product. Number three, Luxury products and services portray quality and design and our workmanship. So again, they're works of art, they're beautiful, they're, you know, I I mentioned the Patek Philippe watch, they're uh, just gorgeous design, stand out. Number four, the brand performs at an experiential level. So I mentioned Ralph Lauren and the mansion and how you feel like you are experiencing the brand. You're walking in literally to the brand when you walk into that store. It's just amazing. Number five, luxury products and services have pedigree. So again, you don't have to have your product around for 80 or 100 years, but you can establish pedigree with your reputation and your brand story. Number six, luxury products and services imply a natural scarcity. So they're handcrafted, they're limited in number, etc. Number seven, they have an emotional connection to the customer and it distances their products and services from mass market brands. So again, for very high-end brands, they don't wanna be like the mass market. They wanna be completely different and, and show this status for what they have. Number eight, luxury products and services live in an environment of detail. So again, you have a high level of customer service, quality product, you've you've thought out and anticipated what your clients will need. Um, That's amazing. Number nine, the buyer associates the product or service with media celebrities and leaders. So again, uh, in this day and age, that's not as important. You can actually, um, you can be the celebrity spokesperson today. A lot of people are doing that on YouTube, for example. Uh, So you can become the well-known person 
and just being out there and having good customer reviews can really help. And that's something that didn't really exist in a way for people to search and to find uh, worldwide. And now we do with customer reviews. So I know that as I buy online, that's becoming more and more important to read the reviews. And finally, number 10, the perceived value is high and pricing is high enough, but not outrageously so. So again, sometimes you can price higher and that will actually increase demand. So it's not always that a high price decreases demand. In this day and age, a high price can increase demand. And you want your pricing to be higher than other people's because you're showing that you have the greater quality, the greater luxury, the greater exclusivity and status. So you want to be priced higher than other people. So all 10 of these things have to be considered when developing your luxury brand. So not all of them may apply to the business that you have, but you still need to think about it and consider how it fits into what your product or service is. And what you learned today is the 10 features of a luxury brand and how you can be a luxury brand and why it's not just about charging a high price. The quality really counts. So again, your action step for this episode is to think about your favorite brands and think about the 10 features of a luxury brand that we talked about. Think about which of those or how all 10 of those are featured in your favorite brands, whether it's your car or clothing or handbag or shoes, golf equipment, whatever it might be, your country club, think about how those exclusive things, how those 10 features of the luxury brand fit into your favorite brands. And not only will you learn something about the brand, but you'll, I promise you, you'll learn something about yourself as well. Well, I'm so encouraged that people are signing up for the 21 Days to a Wealthy Mindset at BeWealthyAndSmart.com. Thank you so much for that. These are just short tips and videos and little reports, just, you know, short, easy to consume, 21 Days to a Wealthy Mindset, because it all starts in your mind, changing from lack to wealth in 21 days. It, how you think is the foundation for everything else we're doing. So get started now removing your limiting beliefs. That's BeWealthyAndSmart.com. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.